Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Priya Shet, and you're tuned into the Daily Dispatch. Now, to close your day on a high note, we have big news coming from Frazo in Mobi as well as Pristine Care. Well, headline number one: TGC brand Frazo has raised about fifty million dollars in a Series B round of funding. The round was led by Westbridge Capital with existing investors such as Six Sense Ventures, Equanimity Investments, Apar Groups, among others, also participated. Now, Frazo is gearing up to reach about ten million monthly orders in the next twelve to eighteen months, and it aims to create a network of five hundred plus dark stores across the top fifteen cities. Well, SoftBank backed in Mobi has announced the acquisition of London-based app Summer, a platform that gives performance insights for mobile app advertisers. Now, coming together in Mobi as well as App Summer, we'll be building an operating system to make the understanding of user acquisition funnels easy with the help of artificial intelligence. And finally, reports suggest that healthcare startup Pristine Care is in talks to raise over 90 to 110 million dollars from investors such as Sequoia Capital, as well as others. Now, Sequoia Capital India is already an investor in this Gurugram-based firm, and if reports are to be believed, this startup will be hitting a valuation of about 1.2 to 1.4 billion dollars very soon. <laughs> Well, on a very special panel today, we have two pet lovers who've also started their own pet startups. I have uh, Anushka Ayers from Wiggles and Rashi Naran from Heads Up for Tales. Thank you very much, ladies, for joining us today on this panel. I want to begin by asking you about the surge that you've seen in the whole pet care industry over the last couple of months. Lots of people buying uh, things online for their pets. Uh, what kind of feedback have you received and what kind of growth have you seen? Let's begin with you, Rashi. Priya, it's been really exciting to witness the growth. I think uh, the pandemic has um, enabled a lot of people to bring home pets that, you know, because they had more time and had more time to spend with them. Um, and also we've seen that, you know, people had uh, time to also bond, not just be around, but bond more deeply. Um, and so they probably realized that they needed more products uh, that would fill everyday needs. So it's been it's been wonderful to see that we we have been experiencing a almost hundred percent year on year growth, and I hope that we can continue that momentum this year as well. I think um, COVID was a boon for us in a lot of sources, um, not in a negative way at all. Um, I think, like Rashi rightly said, I mean, pets, pet parents and pets started bonding so much more. There was a huge surge in adoptions. Um, people wanted to spend more time. Uh, people wanted to understand pet care better. So this really worked well for us as well. Uh, we were hit with too many calls in our customer support. We were a very small team back at that point of time. So for me, I think uh, for Wiggles, COVID really um, supercharged our growth. And I think we grew 7x revenue wise year on year. So it's been a good year. And we're looking to do the same this year as well. You know, I want to talk to you about specific categories that have done well uh, on the platform. So, uh, you know, if there are specific categories that you could call out in terms of categories that have been seeing uh, an exponential growth over the last couple of months, so Rashi? For us, Priya, and I think it's more for the industry as a whole, is really food and treats, uh, grooming products, basically anything that is repeatable and consumable back for. Um, and then we've also seen a surge in toys and um, accessories as well. Anushka, have you seen a similar kind of uh, growth trend? Oh, absolutely. Food and treats, I think, I mean, it's it's absolutely essential for a dog or a cat, right? It's consumed three times a day at least. So anything recurring has worked wonders for the industry as a whole. Um, apart from that, we've also seen a surge in grooming products, a lot of veterinary products, pharma products. So it's an interesting space, definitely. There's a lot of surge that's happening. You know, as we speak, it's the festive period. Uh, people want to buy else for others, for their pets. So, uh, you know, is festive a big period for you in the pet care industry as well, Rashi? It is Priya. We started out many years ago by introducing a lot of festive uh, products. So for example, we have a Diwali box, a Christmas box, etc. So now we're getting ready to launch the Diwali box. It has sort of Diwali treats and earmuffs and other things that can help um, pets during this season. And, and why not when there's gifting for every other member of the family, then why not the sweetest, furriest member as well? Uh, what kind of growth are you expecting, Anushka, from the festive period? Uh, are you seeing adoption of people you know going out there and shopping for their pets already 
oh massive it's it's crazy but before i answer that question rashi i would love one of those boxes that sounds very delightful of course like the sweetest thing ever <laughs> absolutely coming your way soon <laughs> yeah but priya to answer your question um i think the adoption for you know diwali pet care in general it's it's crazy that's that's how i would put it um pet parents want to shop for pet products more than anything else at this period of time and i think um, that's precisely why for all the major sales i think pet care has really become a massive segment that has grown in the last couple of years as well right even for different market i think we're all gearing up for diwali i think it's a great period diwali christmas new years you name it and i think pet care really stands apart you know, talk to us about the kind of diversification that you're seeing in the business you know while people are buying things for their pets there's also online consultations as one business uh, which has been seeing a huge uh, growth and anushka i think uh, you had alluded to that uh, in our earlier conversation on how online consultations are also playing a very big role uh, uh, you know uh, in the pet care industry so what kind of feed that so far and are you looking at growing this pie further Sure. So, um, I think we started Smartwet, which is our online vet consultation via video call. Um, I think seventy-two hours when the pandemic sort of kicked in, right? So there was a lot of gray space, a lot of gray area where people didn't know whether shops were to be open or, um, you know, um, doctors would be available or not. And I think that's when our team just sort of came together, seventy-two hours, and we had this thing that you know we could just connect pet parents to. Um, and this was again listening to the feedback and the insights of customers because, like I said, I mean our customers. the port blowing off and we didn't know what to do back then um worked wonders i think will across the globe um and we've got massive number of consultations coming in and we've also diversified further we've gotten into behavioral consultation as well online we do diet consultations now nutritional um, advices and uh, now we've launched something very interesting it's called the anxious pet program where you know diwali being a period where there's a lot of anxiety for pets right um people don't know how to go about these things and while we have our offline sessions and training sessions in pune which is our head head office um we also have an online session curated by our trainers behaviorists our vets um to make things easier for pets right during this and scared of fireworks thunderstorms so on and so forth so just to sort of ease the anxiety we've also launched a very interesting program called um, puppy intro plan where you know if you're getting a puppy home we help you ad- and advise you as to what is to be expected what you should be bringing home what is the ideal puppy for your house or a kitten for your house so on and so forth so we're trying to get into the life of a pet at the entry point which is puppyhood and then you know they're with us for a very long time rashi are you looking at more areas of diversification at this point in time more categories that you'd like to add at uh, what kind of uh, focus areas can we expect from you uh, going forward priya we're working very hard on uh, building a lot of content we've always done that but i think making it reach more people also building a larger community um and also we're doing a lot more spas a lot of our stores were smaller format we're moving into larger format so that uh, all our new stores are coming up with spas you know we feel like that really um um in just it makes the experience a little bit more wholesome brings people and it's just lovely to have doggies all over the stores so yes uh, these are a couple of things we're focusing on in the near future and then of course many more plans for next year you know uh, as we speak uh, rashi i want to uh, you know just uh, highlight that you all had raised some money uh, uh, earlier uh, this year uh, and uh, you know when you talk about the offline strategy looking at moving to large format stores i want to understand or uh, you know what kind of fund utilization is going to be happening through that fundraise and are you looking at uh, sort of increasing the number of stores if you could give us some ballpark numbers in terms of what kind of expansion are you planning um definitely increase the store count we still feel like we barely scratched the surface we have 10 new stores coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks and um, and then we're going to pause and see how they do with we've, we've tried a couple of tier 2 cities we've gone to amdabad which just done ludhiana lucknow a couple of months ago so still testing the waters and seeing how it's doing um and then of course you know we love the stores because they allow discoverability of our products it gives us a chance to interact directly with our but there is a huge focus on the online piece as well and we're building teams around that really scaling tech uh really trying to add in a lot more interesting modules that can help pet parents along their journeys so lots in the works Uh, Anushka, I want to understand focus areas for you going forward. Uh, you know, at Wiggles, uh, come uh, you know with the end of two thousand twenty-one, and uh, 
FY22, uh, you know, wanted to understand what would be your key focus areas going forward. If you could highlight three or, uh, or so focus areas. Priya, I think for us, I'll uh, make it very short, crisp and simple. We are in the business of uh, must have, not good to have. So healthcare is our core focus, come what may. We want to get into all the essentials and recurring factors in a pet's life, right? So um, be it any sort of pet care service, which is absolutely recurring, you're going to be there. We're looking at dog walking in the near future as well. We're also coming up with some really interesting and very neat of the art products. So one of the products which I've not really spoken out in the open, but I will, is epilepsy. So uh, we're coming up with a product for epilepsy in pets. Um, it's um, There are no products in the market for epilepsy. Um, and pets are actually prescribed human medicines. There's a medicine called Gardenil. Um, and that's what they're prescribed. And it's, it's terrible, right? I mean, why is there no veterinary formulation that is bankable, reliable, and is actually good, good quality? So Wiggles is actually working on a formulation and we're going to be hitting the markets very soon. So we're really trying to come up with stuff which is not really touched, very untapped, um, and trying to get into the life of the pet very early on. Will you be looking at some sort of fundraising this year? Don't worry, Priya, you'll be the first one I'll call. Pretty much in the cards. You will be hearing from us very soon. Right now, I want to bring both of you in to understand the kind of challenges or the gaps that are there in the whole pet care space uh, at this point in time. Uh, we don't have many major players who are present in this space. The market is a bit fragmented. Uh, but there are, of course, gaps and challenges when it comes to different pets. While there are products for dogs and cats, uh, you know, there are so many other pets that people have at home uh, and that kind of space is a little bit untapped. So do you think that is a gap that you'd like to address uh, through uh, the products and services that you offer, Rashi? Not yet, Priya. We do uh, have a small section for guinea pigs, rabbits, etc. But we're still not seeing enough growth there. We still feel there's a lot more that we can do on the dog and cat side. So not quite yet, but definitely in the future as it, as it grows, uh, hopefully, yes. So we did a little pilot um, for small animals in general. So we actually extended our services um, that is, you know, wet on call grooming services to small animals, receiving a crazy response. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really know this market is this big. Um, and, you know, I ended up looking like, just like I'm sure like all of us, I mean, I ended up looking at numbers on the internet and I actually ended up realizing that the numbers out there are bolted dash because no one's really bothered going and researching and identifying, you know, what's the current industry standing at, right? I think internet says... Um, 29 million dogs in cat. I think it's so much more, right? But no one's really taken the time to go and do their research. So I think it's a huge market. Turtle food is something I'm very keen on. Um, it may look like a small market, but it's, it's a huge market, growing market. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities there. You know, when you talk about kind of the kind of policies from the government in terms of uh, the whole pet care industry, there's still not, not anything that's a specific policy as such. So I wanted to understand any ask from the government at this point in time, uh, Rashi? Um, I think that uh, as a collective industry, I feel like there's a lot of talk about the shortage of pet food. A lot of it is being imported. So maybe just, you know, encouraging more local players, uh, providing a little bit of support on that side and just overall nurturing the entire ecosystem and the industry at large. That would That's what I would say. I agree with Rashi here because um, I think with the whole India China standoff and the vocal for local, I think one thing we realized initially, I did not really believe the whole make in India bit. I thought it was just another promotional strategy. But then, you know, I actually ended up realizing that people want an Indian brand cultivated out of India, right? Um, and that could any startup whatsoever. Um, so I think that's something that the government could really cultivate, could really support um, food, especially because everything out, everything out in the market is actually over and it's already imported, right? So something on those fronts would be fantastic. All right. On that note, ladies, thank you very much for being a part of this very insightful panel discussion. I think lots of interesting points and takeaways for all the pet lovers out there. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> to say goodbye many thanks for joining us on this week's daily dispatch i'll catch you on monday at 5 p.m goodbye wishing all of you a very happy dashera and have a lovely weekend